So now today we are going to be doing Limoges box rectangular. Uh, the other Limoges box that I did had a fundascully lid on it. If you watched the round version, this one is the flat. It is not a fundascully version. I don't remember who the designer is. Um, so, because I had already cut the waste canvas off, and so I just, I definitely want to show you this version. You can see that the edge of it is much thinner, so we are going to definitely have to be very careful on the thickness of our walls and stitched area, and we definitely have to make sure because that because the edge is so much thinner that how we wrap it around our mat board and we're gonna have some cording we're gonna have to puff the top a little bit because when you see how much bigger it is we need that to be filled and I do not want to attempt to bury that much canvas um, along the edge. This is all things you'll learn as we go. There's a bit of engineering that I did prior to this measuring and things to try to make sure that we... Okay, so we have, I have to, due to my own mm. errors, due to my own errors, I have to redo the gluing aspects of the lid and the box uh, body. Uh, this clamp clamps down too hard and with these thinner um, hinges, you just can't do it. So you have to do it the way I used to do it, which is really quite old school. So when you're doing this box top, okay, this lid, instead of, and I'm leaving this video in, I'm inserting this prior because there's information in the other video because I've already done this. I'm not redoing this. You need to see how I applied it, but Next time, there won't be a gap, as much of a gap, because this board is so much thinner. And you won't have to use the clamps, even though the lid part is not the part that bent the frame. Uh, it was doing the box part that bent the frame, which ultimately led to me taking a pair of needle nose pliers and trying to bend this forward and actually the first thing I did was take a hammer and try to just tap the front of it so that it would angle the front of the clasp forward a little bit. Don't ever do that because um, it didn't work. If it's not shutting right, it's because you've bent this frame, the hinge somehow. Okay, because obviously if it's before you did it, so, um, for whatever reason, it is bent, and you will need to try to find a way to unbend it, but this is so bad because once I took it off of the box, took everything off, and how did I get it off so easily? Because it hadn't cured the 24 hours. Um, if you need to attempt to because it has cured and it really is good and stuck tight um, one of the things you could uh, you can try to do um, because luckily it, you can get it off in the past uh, not on these but when I've had to separate other people's finishing that uh, was 
not great finishing and somebody's like please rescue my thing um to get glue to let go without doing chemicals and things in the past is I take my iron and without steam just gently leaving it above just hold it above let it get a little warm in a specific area okay obviously if it starts heating up and it hurts your fingers you know hello put an oven mitt there or something between so you're not hurting yourself obviously but you're gonna warm up that area it doesn't have to be red hot just warm it up just a little bit and then bring in your butter knife and from because there's a lip on this side you can't do it from this side try to just gently pry down and shim between here okay to get in between the glue okay you will probably you might might have to replace your lining if you have to try to remove this it's just and I'm shocked that I'm not having to do that because gold lame is a beast to work with which I say throughout this video um, thoroughly annoying um, the reason I do the lid first really came to me when I started rethinking how I had to do this is that you have to if you put this on first who all nice and glued down well then it's very cumbersome to try to glue this on make sure this is here now you are putting this in jeopardy of potentially getting glue on it I'm still advising you do the lid first okay so here we have our lid we're going to flip this oh, I'm hitting not one way it's another the hinge lid is raising it okay so there's you can trace that on like that do the same thing do the exterior line I'm using a mechanical pencil because it gets down under the little nubby edge things here okay okay all right you can see how far in between you need to go actually give yourself enough overhang keep the material you use for lining especially with these lids thin keep it a thin material using the ultra suede on this um, definitely don't wrap it around this piece just do it like I did in the um, in the round box video. You cannot do that technique with every fabric because the potential for having um, the the potential for having the The spray glue that I use in that video um, on this piece uh, may show through bleed through whatever you want to say so um, typically you don't have this dark on this side 
because poster board is white, but obviously I don't have any poster board in my queue right now. So you're going to get your material on the one side. If it's thin like the gold lame, you can just put it around, wrap it up. It really isn't going to add that much bulk to it. Okay, which one's my good one? Okay, here's my good one. So here's our lid. I kind of like to work with these lids um, up on something because otherwise they're wobbly because you need to have that little bit of overhang there <clears throat> because the clasp. So what I do is I take, hold on, oh, my bag's over there. So you're going to take your glue and you're going to put a little dollop there and a little dollop there and a little dollop there. Just a schmear like in the rest of this video when I actually do the mat board piece in there, which I'm leaving that in. Just don't use those clamps with this thin. You will regret it like I did. Okay, so now we're going to put this board of uh, covered fabric there. And you got to you got to try to drop it in there and leave it. So this is what you want to do. You want to line it up on one side, hold it with this side and drop it on and let it be. Because if you try to move it around with the glue that's there, left there, let that glue that you had there be a, let it sit for a second and let it get a little tacky. So when you drop it in, it'll stay where you put it. Because otherwise, if you put this in and start moving it around within that, within this frame, like this, if you move it around like that, you're going to see the glue that smeared because you moved the piece once it was in. Okay, which I make clear in the video ahead. So what I'm going to do now. I need that. Okay. Because I'm going to show you exactly. So this is different because obviously this is already on, etc. You're going to put this on here. Okay? Let it set up. You know, give it and make sure you put a little bit of pressure on it for a few minutes. Don't push down in the center because this it'll bow. This poster board is weak enough, it'll bow. Just hold it where those glue points are for right now. So they're set. Okay? Set and good, right? Then you're going to take your lid with sands this and say it won't won't look like that in the video. And you're gonna put your glue around the edge just in the L. Don't put it too close. Well, you won't have that problem because this will already be glued in. <clears throat> but you don't want to put too much in there because what will happen is the whole jelly ketchup issue where you squeeze the bread and out the sides it comes. So this is why I was trying to use the clamps was so that you would not have this issue of not enough contact. Okay, because this is thicker um, board and I cannot remove this board now. And like I said, I just, I don't want to have a problem. I am going to be putting glue along that edge. I'm going to be putting glue along the interior edge here to make sure we have, you know, good glue on glue. 
and I tried to remove as much of the old glue as possible. I see a piece there that I want off because I don't want any issues um, with uh, old, old glue, new glue. This, uh, this is all sewn on, this cording is, <clears throat> so that I can roll it down over to hide the mechanics, which you will see in the future. Once I get this all set for how I want it to be centered and it's all good. And I'm checking the front and I'm checking the back and everybody's happy, right? It's a really old school way of doing it. Is, I'm gonna take a board, I'm gonna put it like that. And this is the way I always used to do it. Is a brick. Just place the brick on top. It'll compress everything down. It'll keep everything nice and tight and you won't have this and ultimately attempting to bend something that is does not want to bend and breaks off. Okay? All right. <clears throat> So the first thing I'm going to do is get all the snot off of my piece here. Turn this to me like this. Now I can't do the little schmear, the little schmear, the little schmear. It, that's just, that's not going to happen for me. Um, because I already have this on, so I'm kind of out of luck. Um, my, I can see that my hot glue on the end of my cording has frayed, and I need to get that to lay down. So that's all that is doing, is reheating the glue that's already there, and, okay. Um, I am doing this uh, a little differently than you will be doing it <clears throat> because of my issue. So here's the front of my piece. And yes, I'm going to show it to you. I'm not going to say, okay, that's how you do it and do it the rest of the way in the video and just set the brick on top. I'm not going to do that. I'm going to show you what I have to do. Okay, I'm going to put this, this is my nice fine nose tipped, putting a decent bead of glue in here, okay, right along that edge. I just grabbed when I brought that up, I made that stringer go against the bottle so that it wouldn't drip all over my table and I have a wet stringer. Every time I do this, I'm like constantly paranoid that I am not, <laughs> that I'm not hitting, uh, that I don't have it on the right way, that I'm gluing the bottom instead of the top. Okay, so I just grabbed that stringer like that. Okay, I don't know if you can see that it's kind of just really hanging on the edge and isn't near the front. I have like one little spot and I'm going to try to minimize that by pulling it back with my doll needle. It'll come right off my doll needle. Just 
stuffed it into my pin cushion and wiped it off. Okay, here is the front. Now, this is, this is a little, <laughs> a lot tenuous for me because I kind of have one shot. I'm putting it in this gutter here. And yes, I am concerned about this uh, for a lot of reasons. I don't want the jelly donut, the peanut butter and jelly sandwich, whatever analogy you like the most. Now, I have a stringer there that has caught my finger. And I can see a stringer going across here. Let's get that off. Okay. I think I want a little more. Right. There. Okay, front, front. I seriously do not recommend doing anything this way it is beyond daunting I don't like not having control. It's not quite. Okay. And I am looking underneath to make sure everything Looks even. Oh, God. I'm too paranoid. I just am so worried. That this is gonna do things I don't want it to do. This will show. Let's see if I can get this to turn. Okay. So that's what it looks like in there. All right. Now it sits. And you move on to doing the body part.
the box part. Um, <clears throat> little advice on that one. Go ahead and get your box measured. You'll see in the video how much of a problem I have with that. So, all right, good luck. On to the next bit. I'm in, hopefully this helped at the beginning and I will be adding another section when it's time to glue the top on to the back part. We were okay. So let's just jump in. Let me clear away some of this stuff. I always start with uh, the lids and this time I didn't even uh, dart it. So I'm going to start with that. We are going to maintain the curve of this on the corners because our little lid has the curves. Fold these under. I'm not going to press them. Now, the funny thing about this, because it is a little bit bigger. Uh, if we attempt to make this small enough without padding it, we'll have a significant amount of thick stitching to have to hide along the edge. We not only have to cover the gap that's going to happen for our interior piece to put the piece of cloth on it, you, it's that mat board, even though it's thin, is going to bring it up a little bit. And I can't just completely cover this with mat board and then put the other top on piece on top, like glue the mat board with the interior material on it and just take up this whole space and then glue it to that. I want to make sure that this top piece is going to hit some glue, if I can, if I can. So we're going to start with getting our top size. It's the same as the bottom. It's easier to do the bottom because of the... I'm trying... there's little um, raised bumps on the edge, so if you can hit that bottom edge without hitting those little bumps. No, I can't do it that way. But we'll be able to see it. And actually, haha, -ha, Kelly, be smart about it. Once you have this, could have had it this way the whole time. I was just fighting for way too long trying to get my, uh, video camera to work so I could film this so I'm a little <sighs> so 
stressed, angry, technology, gotta love it, not. Okay. I think I'm just under an eighth there. And actually, we can use this front line to make sure we're square still. Yep, we are. Gosh, it might have been done better just by doing my eyeballing that I do. I may have to stop and reshoot this because I'm just having a hard time focusing. I'll, I'll pull it together. Don't worry. All right. Let's see how we do with this. Let's see if it's going to fit right. Almost chopped right into it there. engineering on these boxes I mean if you're doing them every day you're gonna and they're the correct measurements and then you kind of you know you write it all down you know how to do it but when you don't do just the same thing every day I mean, I have it all worked out for my uh, lobster trap ornaments, and I pretty much know exactly how it needs to be, and you know, all of my canvases are counted out and stitch painted, and so. Let me see. Is that equal? Oh. Doesn't look like it from the top side because I didn't bevel it yet, but. Okay. It is even. Now, could I use something thinner than a piece of mat board? Yes. Yes, I could. I could use a little thin piece of poster board, but the poster board could potentially have a little gap between the top piece because of all of the 
turned over edges of material, I'd like to have something just as firm in there. So that is why I am going to, oh, who knows, maybe I'll change it out and put a spacer in between of mat board. Okay. Now, first thing we're going to do is we're going to look at this. That is a lot to turn over. And that is going to leave if I wanted to do a flat, if I did it as a flat. It's going to leave a very thick edge. And, jeez. Oh that is a lot to turn over this way as well. And it's going to make for some seriously thick corners of stitched area. Okay, I'm going to go ahead with my plan to add some loft to it and try to use up some of the void for lack of better terminology. Now, if it was me, because it was done with a flat gold stitch, I would probably add a little real gold bow on the top. But I was not instructed to do so, so I am I am going to trim the edges of this now. I'm going to try to keep it off the edge. I'm going to kind of move because this is going to create a lot of little... It's interesting, I tried to do this from the top the other day, and I didn't do as well as if I cut it like this. To get my shape. Not sure why. I always used to. Now, if you don't want a puffed top, don't do a puffed top. But you can see why I'm saying to do a puffed top. Because. This design has so much extra canvas, it is potentially going to uh, make our gap and the mechanics we have to cover very deep indeed. Oh, I think that's going to be perfect. So this is the uh, one inch uh, batting that I use that's the new foam which I am going to have on my website for supplies I'm trying to add a glue stick okay bring it up and make sure that we don't see white. I don't want to see any white waste canvas there. You know, you can see a little by the ribbon, but it's just because of the camera angle. Okay. Yes, yes, yes. Now, here is, I'm going to push this towards and kind of flatten it. And then roll this around. What I don't want to do is have it, sorry, cross my legs there, um, so thick that it pulls these sides up. 
I can kind of bend them back down, but I think that's going to be okay. Okay, so here we go. Now, if somebody said, no, no, Kelly. This must be a flat top fox. I would do it. It would not be easy. But um, I would potentially have to cut into the stitching to be able to wrap all of that around and not have such bulky cor corners. Um, And that is so close. Oh, look at that. I think this is going to actually be like perfect. I'm going to do a quick nip back there because of that curve. Just trying to make life a little easier for myself. Wow, that really did something weird to my camera there, didn't it? And to there. And to there. That's for our little rounded corner. That's still going to add a little bit of bulk, but it'll be okay. So sometimes when you see, um, as we have talked about, before. Sometimes you see a little thicker cording on there and you're like, oh, I just don't like that. Well, sometimes it is a necessity to cover our mechanics. And then again, some people just like thicker cordings. Once you finish things yourself, you understand why we do certain things. I don't even have to pull very hard to wrap that around at all. I have a lovely nice little end there. But again, Oh, you can see our little doggy ears there. If I put a little nose there and a couple of eyes, you, well, they look more like cat ears, don't they? I have a chihuahua, so it kind of looks like doggy ears to me. Okay. And pull that. Like that. Flip it back to this end. I'm going to take all of the little extra bits of canvas schniblets and get rid of it. There's one left. <coughs> Not great, but not hold oh, not as bad as I have seen it. I really don't like having ugh, I hope that still fits. Oh good, it does. Only a tiny bit to cover. Uh, <clears throat> cutting into stitching ever. Um, I avoid it at all costs because uh, you never know what might unravel. Um, cutting up close to the edge on a very well stitched piece like this, uh, it, it, that's not as scary for me because it'll usually 
pretty much stay together. But cutting up in to stitching, again, chance of unraveling. Kind of like me a few minutes ago. It's really a good thing that nothing was recording when I was trying to deal with technology. Okay, I'm starting to get a little bow out there from the turn under. We can minimize that uh, appearance eventually, sort of. I gotta see how well it fits in. If I've gotten it too big, I gotta pull it in more. Squishing it down. How far over is it? Yep, I gotta pull that in a little more. Alright, so we're gonna just set this on top. Let the heat of the gun tip. We're not adding glue, we're just heating up what we just put there. And I have to pull that in further. I was trying to make it, I was worried it was getting uh, too rounded, but in all actuality I needed to because otherwise it's too big. It won't fit. It won't look quite right on the top of the box. And You know, this is where the problem lies with a lot of over stitching or design area that's too big for what it is made for. I have a defined space to fit that into and I don't want it to look like a little mushroom top on top of this box. I want it to fit in there as snug and lovely as possible. I actually have had times where I was able to Ooh, ow, that hurt. Just snapped my nail back the wrong way. <sighs> Des designing something. You know, I've heard people uh, comment on our finishing group about how um, now that they do their own, a lot of their own finishing, um, they actually choose their stitches differently and how uh, they think about it. When they're doing it, they approach it in a different way. And there is something to be said for it because when you're a designer that doesn't finish um, and you just kind of take general measurements and go, oh, this will fit. Uh, 
it, it's, it's hard for the people that then have to make it happen. Um, or say somebody gets something like this and they do two extra rows all the way around. Oh dear. I just actually had to rip stitches out of somebody else's the two extra rows of white around something that they don't want those stitches to show, but it is a engineered piece <clears throat> and you can't engineer it that way. You can't make, you can't hide those. Your seams would be too big, so I had to undo it. Okay, so you can't tell the difference between the top and the bottom. Uh, by the extra little gutter to drop the piece into like in the round piece when you see the fundus gully top you can see the difference so you have to look at uh, the little icon that's on the front okay it's a little butterfly for this one uh, and I think there's one that has is a heart shape and it has a heart so we're going to set uh, Gold is kind of, I don't want to say pilling, but for lack of a better word, getting fuzzies. So this will fit nicely in the end when it's all said and done. I might actually be able to pare down my but I'm not going to make that assumption right now because I still have to make the piece that fits inside that has the fabric. So I think that that is a pretty good profile right now. And yeah, yeah, looks good. I don't see any holes, but I didn't expect to see holes at this point I expect to see them in the next stage <sighs> okay deep breath oh nope not that one so now what I'm going to do I'm going to take a second. Okay. Readjust. Now we're going to make the insert. For the top, we have, I'm laying this flat, the bottom piece, that butterfly on the front has a little, okay, hold it tight. Comes down to latch, so to get this, I have to open it up. And I am going just freehand it I'm not in the mood to muck about with that okay
I'm going to take this edge off. I'm going to bevel it. And the reason I'm doing that is because I want to make sure that my top piece can get as close to the bottom and I want my fabric to take as little room as possible. Uh, the fabric that I'm using for this is a gold lame. Uh, it is not that I think I'd see that pencil through there, but I'm not taking any chances. So the gold lame is a pain in the butt, but I liked it the best for the interior of this. Uh, keep it sparkly. I may regret it, but my bevel side is going to be up. And unlike the round version, I will be wrapping this because gold lame is a pain in the butt. So <laughs> I don't want any, I don't want to take a chance that the adhesive is going to um, do something funky. I don't know. I just, I, I also want to show you this way of doing it. So it really doesn't. So if you, gold lame is a pain in the butt because if you get it too hot, it melts. If you don't get it hot enough, this happens where my fusible interfacing doesn't want to stay on. Okay, see, boop, just pops right off because it didn't get it hot enough. And yes, I have melted a piece of this and yeah, been not a happy camper about it. But the other reason why that probably just let go is because it was on the edge and I didn't iron it well enough. So give me a second with this while my iron heats up and I'm going to hit it again. Uh, yeah. So. takes forever when you need it to go fast, right? No steam. Sorry about that. Smooth it while it cools. To make sure it actually sticks this time. Okay? Okay, flat side down, bevel side up, which is usually not the case. And clip there, clip there. Push that as glue line as flat as you can. Uh, there is a uh, double stick tape that you could put there and flip it if you felt like you can't get. I know some people that use that. Um, it's acid free. I think you use it in scrapbooking. Uh, as well as some that is for specifically for fabric. But I tend to just stick with what I know to my detriment. No, I'm just kidding.
when you're doing this you want to make sure that it's flat because if because mat board bends if you're holding it like with a little bit of a curve and you're you could make a pucker on the back side okay and you don't want to be fighting a curve when you're putting it into the top I'm going to talk for a second about fabric choice for lining. Uh, ooh, that reminds me. Ooh. ooh, 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 ooh. I did not grab a bottom rut row. Uh, so a I have issues working with uh, certain satins and uh, taffetas because of, well, to be honest, my skin is so dry so much of the time that sometimes I'll be working with it and a little bit of my skin will snag the, uh, the satin and make a little pull mark. Oh, you want to see me have a hairy fit? Yep, that's it, because then it's pull it out, redo it. So just remember that there are certain materials that are going to be easier to line with, that are going to just come together nicer. Um, if you decide to challenge yourself uh, or are like I am and are a glutton for punishment because you just think this will look so much more fabulous, then yeah. Just know you are a, the author of your own angry moments. Okay. Okay, and we drop that there, right? There. And bless my soul. What did I forget to bring with me? You know it. The tiny applicator glue. Uh, this is Fabri-Tac glue. It is what I use when I have to use glue. It is, uh, it affords you time to set things down. I am putting a tiny dot there. Okay, a schmear. Not a dot. And there. And there. And there. So now, make sure the butterfly is up. And then I am setting it in the right place. Because I can't wiggle it too much. That glue is there, and I don't want to drag it and have it show on the interior. Correct? Correct. But I'm going to let this sit until it tacks in a little bit for a minute because I don't want it to shift when I put the top on. Uh, I said on the last one that I do not want to do, um, I usually will put the cording around the top. Um, first, I would like to, 
I'm a little apprehensive to do it with this one. Just because it would be nice to be able to have it on to make sure I don't put it on too low and then not be able to sink it as far in as I would like. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure. Gonna hold, or is it gonna pop up? Looks like it's gonna hold. But let's just give it another minute. These do finish very sweet, they're very cute. Make sure I don't show any glue gushes. You know, the whole uh, ketchup oozing issue that I joked about in my previous. Okay, people, so this is what I'm talking about. see it it no longer is able to drop down in so makes me not happy This is here and is why we have even if I take this out. It still was raised up by the corners a little bit. Let's get pulling these in. I'm going to bend that beveled edge in. as much as I can. Okay. Alright. I mean, can you see what I'm doing here? Everyone might not agree with me that makes these, but, you know, we do what we gotta do. Bend the poop out of this. To try to make it as concave as possible. I mean it's not gonna it's not gonna hurt the structure of this because it's puffed, number one. And number two, it is going to be adhered down onto this, so it'll stay rigid. Uh, I would never do this if this was the lid itself. 
without the metal trim. I wouldn't ever weaken the top by doing that. But all right. Now, what is going to be key? Now, I am not going to put my cording on now. Okay. Is that I need to have a piece. Uh, previously, if you watched the other video, you always see me, and I usually use mat board to put on each side to use my clamps. I will not be doing that this time. I'm going to go find a piece of wood to put on the top and a piece of wood on the bottom to try to compress everything down into hitting glue. Okay, and we'll see how it goes. And what doesn't do what I want it to do will ultimately then just cover the cording. Be covered by cording. Which I think it'll I think it'll go right down. And I totally just bunched up that bottom piece. It just moved. I gotta make sure that Okay, still no visible glue at all. <sighs> maddening, 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 maddening. Might help if I paused it while I searched, right? Well, why is it when you want to find something, you can't? Oh dear. Now we have Speed Racer outside. Okay. I'm going to put that down because I don't want the metal to get marred. Okay. This is all I could find. It's part of a. Yeah, that. Matt cutting something or other. And I'm going to, I'm going to commit <laughs> to making myself crazy. it all the way around the edge cannot overfill anything you don't want to take a chance that it's going to gush out the sides you do want to ensure that it is plenty in there it all has good contact Okay, hope that's not too much. I'm going to set this down. I'm going to kind of look. Make sure that I don't like not having control. It's not quite. Okay. And I am looking 
underneath to make sure everything looks even. Oh, God. I'm too paranoid. I just am so worried. that this is gonna do things I don't want it to do. Okay. All right, not that this will show. Let's see if I can get this to turn. So that's what it looks like in there. All right. Now it sits. And you move on to doing the body part, the box part. Um, <clears throat> little advice on that one. Go ahead and get your box measured. You'll see in the video how much of a problem I have with that. So, all right, good luck. On to the next bit. I'm in, hopefully this helped at the beginning and I will be adding another section when it's time to glue the top onto the back part. <sighs> okay, so um, I did some measuring earlier uh, otherwise I wouldn't be able to go on with this. I know that the uh, two sides are two inches long, but or are three inches long and these are two inches long and there's the rounded corners three eighths of an inch. So I had measured this all the way out, okay, like this. Um, I may have to shorten the panels on these to ultimately fit them into this, but, um, the seam on this goes in the back and it's more than a pain in the butt, in my opinion. Uh, because the way I used to do it is I used to take the little panels and I'd put them here and then I'd have a little section for the curved and then I'd have the main panel in the front and the two inchers on each side and it would all fold together like I do my boxes stand box stand up with feet uh, but for this um, what eventually ended up happening is I'm well, because then I would take all of that and then I would put these seams together and I would sew it together. And um, it made me crazy a lot of the times. It, it all works out in the end, but it, it can make you nuts. So... Um, I am going to do this for the first time with this one where I sew it using the machine. So I'm going to put these two ends together and I'm looking through and lining everything up here and I'm not going to pin them along this edge because Needlepoint canvas is so um, thick, you end up jutting one side forward. I really must keep these perfectly aligned front and back with each other because I need to just 
catch that one stitch. These Each of these bands is four stitches across. The back one is six stitches. So hopefully I don't screw myself, but I would kind of lose that one stitch anyway, turning it uh, or trying to meet those two together. Not quite sure that this approach is going to actually work. So this might be a non-video. <laughs> All right, I'm going to sew this together and be right back. All right, let's see if I royally mucked it up or not. Okay. Nope, looks like I hit the stitches the way I wanted to. Sort of. Okay. It doesn't really matter with this one because it's so easy to, so much easier to turn out. Okay. Wow. Okay. Didn't quite catch quite as much at the top. Actually, I can't really tell which is the top and which is the bottom. That's interesting. I think we'll keep that way up a tiny bit smaller. Can I just tell you how much I don't like doing these? Ha ha ha. Again, if you're doing them all the time, you know you have templates. You get it. I do not. And I don't think I've had done this rectangular one before. Now, why am I marking all of these off? Because we have to round our corners. All right, I'm gonna start at this end.
Now, some of you may say, well, why shouldn't I just do it in panels? You can. If you have a fabulous way to do it, awesome. This is just kind of how I have done it and in the past um, I've done, like I said, I've done it where I laid the little panels out and I wrapped it around and I did it, but you know, this is kind of my engineering moments at its peak because I don't usually do the um, sewing. And I should have done my scoring in the corners, in the three-eighths. Okay. While I was there, again, not thinking. Last one I did, I kept having to take it out and score it and score it and score it. I was like, really, Kelly? Because I didn't measure it right. I think that was the little house one I did. But then again, it could have been the square Hermes one that I did. Something to be said for working on something a little bit bigger than the little tiny corners. Cor ah, blah, blah. Mm. Now, I think I better be careful because I believe I grabbed the little bit thinner board. And I don't want to take a chance of going straight through it.
I guess this is where using the uh, metal flashing uh, is a benefit because you can just bend it where you want to bend it and you don't have to worry about it. Uh, are you hitting the right spot, etc., etc. Take my Oops, sorry, 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 exacto blade. I'm going to roll it. Just kind of breaking down the corners a little bit. That looks wrong. Well, I'm not sure I can actually fit this in the way I did with my round one. This ought to be interesting. <laughs> oh, goodness, Kelly. The things you don't consider when you're doing things. I want to try to make sure to get... The design centered as much as possible. Just putting that in.
next belt, right? Gee, I should have put my middle mark on it. Then I could have lined it right up with this. Bah, humbug. Well, you know what? It's not glued. Who says we can't? Now this paper model, I fit it right into that top. I'm sorry, I didn't do it with this showing. I laid out a piece that measures this. I put it in the top. I curved the corners. You can see all the places that I thought I was supposed to do it, and I mucked it up. And then I bent it around, and it fit in there perfectly. Oops, wrong way. In the previous one. But, yeah. We shall see, won't we? We shall see. This could just be a flippin' hot mess. And actually, you know what? I don't want to, but I might be taking that back out of the... out of its little vices. Okay, ooh, jeez. Oh, I am losing it. Bevel, 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 bevel. I want you to realize also that by trying to not have supported, if you try to not have supported corners where it's round, uh, you'll feel it. You'll feel it when you pick it up. Okay. If there isn't something in there, you will feel it. Still just really yeah, not sure how this is gonna work. I am going to do the most minimal tacking down ever. Let's get all of these folded under. Should do this before. You know, at this point, I just can't even. Three, four, five. Oh, cheese and crust. There's five on each one. Not four. 
brilliant. Ah. Oh. Doesn't take much to really throw me off my game. Goes right on. Okay, I'm scrapping it. I'm scrapping it because I am about to make myself crazy. Crazy, crazy, crazy. And I, I cannot do that today to myself, making myself nuts. So I know that each one is three inches without the wrap around. The front and the back. Okay, there's that. Now the other issue is the more I handle this, um, this was not a happy camper in blocking anyway. So now I've had a little shift. So I have to make sure that I mark this. Correct, correct. Okay. And trying to line up the center stitch, which is that one. See, I like to make videos for you that I can go and this is how you do it and this is what you do and this is why I haven't done these videos because I can't just confidently give you the this is what you do and this is how you do it and I like to be able to one, two, three, four, five. I just, I like to be able to not have guesswork. 
that you measure it and this is how you do it and and this is the ugly reality so that means that on the back it should be an inch and a half roughly right that comes off this seam. But there's a little bit of a seam there. So what do we got? So there's our inch and a half. But that's not, see, again, not right. So if I put this piece, That is really wrong. So I'm going to do an inch and a quarter. See where we end up. Yep, it's so right there. Okay. Okay, where's my piece of mat board? Kind, right? Yeah. Mm. Behave myself, use my blade I know you're thinking, so how are we going to do the corners? Obviously, we're going to pull monkeys out of you know where and have a make it work moment. Well, it needs to be inch and three eighths at least. So I'm going to do an inch and a half. that was coming. Okay. 
and then I'm going to do a little score. Why do that, you say? Just in case we need it to bend. It'll take a lot, but we'll be able to bend it. Put oop, 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 oop. Sorry. Gonna go ahead and glue that in. Okay. Okay. Just like that. Thing. Before I get rid of all of that. Now, maybe I'm wrong and people just make square corners and they don't make the rounded parts, but I don't know. I want it to fit so nice into that corner and up against that lid that, yeah, that's when having my comp kind of compulsions is... Not fun. Sometimes with the amount of canvas you have, design-wise, 
It's not always possible. So at this point, I am going to uh, yeah, height of ridiculousness here. I can honestly say I've never done one like this before. Trying to have that nice seam on the back may have been my downfall. Or the not hand sewn. I don't know. Come on you, get out of there have schniblets that flew up into the edge. I'm going to push this so it is nice and tight against that seam. This is so much more difficult. I kind of don't advise that you attempt to do it this way. Maybe this is definitely the one you want to get the nipping, sh <laughs> get get the metal flashing, make your life easy, or er, maybe I don't know. Maybe it's not any easier, but I definitely think doing it the way I've done it in the past where I just hand sew the back seam was better. Now I may say something different by the end, but I do want you to honestly see some of the challenges that might pop up for you. So. I remember thinking once on one of these that I did. Oh, I'm so glad I just have the square left. Because that'll be so much easier than the round. <laughs> uh, and again, I mismeasured and made myself crazy trying to accomplish what I was trying to accomplish what I needed to accomplish I really and 
and I just stayed up. My daughter was like, Mom, why don't you just go to bed? Because I was doing it at home. I said, I, I, I can't. I cannot face this in the morning, too. <laughs> uh, I was just like, no, no, I'm not going to. This will be done today. Kind of pushing that against to make sure that's going to lay flat. And hold my seam nice. And when you're a professional finisher and you have something that goes awry, whether it is something you have done so many times and just something unexpected happens, which it does happen, uh, and you have to take it all apart and redo and you just want to put your head down and have a serious little cry or a hissy fit or, you know, wow, I totally forgot where I was going with this. You still have to finish it. It still has to get done. You still have to figure out a way to make it work. Um, it'll still be sitting on your table otherwise. And you will still have to do it. No matter what. Not what you wanted to hear? Well, okay. <laughs> oh, goodness. So, there's the two inches that I should be able to fit in there. All right, I got to pause this and I got to take the top out of the bike. And I forgot to hit unpause. Okay, so what I discovered looks really good. I want to get it back into the vise, though. Now that I have done a quick measure. But what I'm going to do is I'm not going to do what I had done prior. Uh, not going to worry about it being a piece of wood or something extremely solid because <clears throat> I want this back on here as fast as possible. If it means I gotta finish taping tomorrow. Yes. Yes. Yes.
center is done down, that corner is down. Scooch this one out to the corner a little bit more. Okay. All right. That's not coming off until I'm done. So this may be suspended. So what I discovered is that I mucked up how big the sides are. The sides are an inch and three quarters. Yes, yes, Kelly is brilliant. It's two inches when you measure it across, but when you look at the end where it is curved, <coughs> Where the curves end, that flat area is only an inch and a quarter. So, a three quarters. Blah, blah. So, this line was where I started my two inches from. So, one and three quarters from that is there. And I've put in that don't think it only gives us I'll tell you what I'm gonna do doing a bevel in the opposite direction for that particular one. Okay. All right, let's throw this in and see what it looks like. It's probably gonna be too big. Because if this is one and a quarter, do, 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 do. Now I can't leave these on the interior <clears throat> because it will be way too thick if I don't end up using them. But we're gonna smash those down and shove them in there. Let's see 
what it looks like. So you remember how on the back corner, oh yeah, on the back corner I did a bevel and I had a little, just one of these. Hold on. Sorry, I had to say hello to a friend. So basically, I'm going to do the exact same thing. I have my one and three quarters. Yep. One and three quarters. And then I'm just going to put an eighth extra to kind of bend. Kind of get a little weird offshoot here, but that that's okay. Okay, so one three quarters, and then an eighth, and maybe a little over an eighth there, because this front side I didn't. Put a bend on the front. I'm going to push that side over as far as possible. And does that have a bevel? Ooh, that popped off. Let's try to keep that on there. Okay, okay. Mm -hmm. Yep. All right, this is, this is going to work. We're going to make this work. It's going to work. It's going to work. Again. If you are using the metal flashing, which then you have to use tin snips on and then you apparently would use some duct tape on it I guess is how they do it uh, but I'm not for certain because I've never ripped one apart or asked before I glue that other piece in Do this. Make sure this one's actually straight instead of how I wonky cut that other one. So this is two inches there. Yep. So we want to go eighth. Uh, 
basically ripping this out shredding it basically <laughs> taking a couple top layers off of this mat board so it will bend in that and oh cheese and crust what did I forget to do bevel got a bevel do is I'm going to kind of lay that out pull all that over all that over
God, I'm sorry. I'm so I'm sorry. I'm sorry. So traveling all over the place here. Now, in the past, when I have put these on, as far as the different sundry boxes that I've done, a little house and things, I have had to come back in and score in here to make it work. Let's really hope and hope and hope and hope and hope and hope that that is not the case. And... Why these stragglers don't want to stay down. So now I can say so far that with these you're going to do your inch and a half and then take an eighth off of that inch and a half, <clears throat> bevel it so that it'll bend. And then on the ends you're going to do the inch and three quarters and one eighth on each end of that. So it's a two inch piece and then you bevel the two ends, the eighth and the eighth. Okay. Um, actually, in, they look pretty rounded. I know from the top they might not look that way, but on the sides they do. Okay. So, just took a second to gobble down some food. Definitely needed that.
Oh my goodness. Okay, this camera's annoying me. I keep working out of the... Uh... Ooh, hot, 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 hot. Yay, yay, yay. Pulled that up, didn't mean to. Wonderful. Okay, it okay. This is where the terrifying stuff happens. Eesh. Now, I uh, put the top back in the vise, but now I'm going to take it back out for a second and see which side fits. Okay. And then... Put it back in and we will keep doing that until we can pop it on the top. I really, really want this to stay nice and as close to that as possible, but I don't want it stressing it at all. Flipping kidding me. I see a tiny bit of play in those corners. But it's only because we don't. Let's do this side. Let's see if this is the bigger side. Okay. Let me see. That's the smaller side. So we want the bigger side up here. And when I say the smaller side, I am saying that because 
when I sewed up the back, we had a stitch that um, yeah, yeah, yeah. There we go. Idaho looks pretty good. I think that's as uh, good as we're going to get it. All right. So what we're going to do next is we're going to take a quick measurement. Yep, so that's two, and that's, we're going to do that by three, good, 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 good. Throw two of these back on. We'll throw them all on. You know what we're going to do? I'm gonna take a second. This is my foam core for the base. this raise that up a little no I'm not even going to do that because that's not going to help the bottom Trying to make it easier on me. I can handle this. Eventually, we will be able to just put this right down. We're going to line it, make sure everything lines up with the lining as far as it's hidden under the gold rim. <clears throat> and then we will Uh, yeah, that. Then we're going to glue the top on and we're just going to bing, bang, boom, done. And then it'll all be compressed and it'll have overnight to sit. Mm -hmm. 
So I have this, uh, I save everything. So I have this lovely uh, piece of velveteen uh, that I will be using for the bottom. So I have to accommodate the um, <clears throat> adjust for the material to make sure it will fit. That material is thick, so. that one a little too much. <gasps> oh, jeez and crackers. What did I do? No. Did I just... Ugh. Ah. No, that's three. Right. Hmm. Well, I can't press it in like that. Well, number one, that's the wrong side. But that still is way too much. So it sh should have been three and an eighth. I don't think, and I don't have enough of this to guess. I guess with the curves around the corners, it might be. All right, here we go again. Well, we do have enough to just barely.
You know what really kind of cheeses me off? Oh, if I had just done my measurement right, could have kept that whole one piece thing. Ah, lessons learned. I keep saying never again and I have people telling me don't say that. You'd have to be the most special person in my life, bestest best of for me to touch one of these again. Just putting it out there. Sorry, it's getting a little warm up here, but I'm not turning on the AC. That's ridiculous. Went down and I opened up all the windows and the slider. Lovely fresh air. And... perfect fit. You might not think it, but it is. I did it right. Just making sure I did the right way up. I'm just pushing these in. I have a little rogue piece of canvas that wants to be a stick up. And if it doesn't behave, it's going to get in trouble. Just pulling that stitch back down 
where it's been displaced from. Okay, let's get that sewn. Mm, hold on. Okay. We are going to get this bottom sewn on. Grab the fabric. I almost wish I'd went the other way.
No, I'm going to change directions. I know. I'm crazy that way. And why am I changing directions? Because I want to grab the material like that and pull it toward the needle point. Okay, I do the same thing when I'm <clears throat> uh, doing brick covers, uh, bottoms. It's just something about how it pulls the fabric towards the needle point and then pulls it up. I don't, I don't know. But I go the other direction to do ornaments. I always put the needle point on the other side into my palm of my hand. I especially want to make sure to do this on these corners as a couple of them are um, being challenging with the darts that I had originally put in. It's one of those little spots right there. So I'm gonna like pull this fabric. Down onto this corner. And I'm gonna Tuck the little blighters in. You know what? That little hairy bit. going to be tucked in under the other way. Let's see. One, two. Every time you see it disappear like that, I'm basically pulling the pin out with my teeth. <laughs> uh, there. Okay. 
and oh, you're gonna make me nuts. feel like I am literally all thumbs. Like the faster you try to go, the more you fumble and <laughs> yeah, there you go.
not quite sure why that stitch has decided to be a pain. Ooh, 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 no, no, no. So, I can take this and scoot along under the back side of these stitches. I'm going to push that down. Okay, yay! Stick here. Ultra suede still stays. Ugh, it's not ultra suede, it's velveteen. I am going to end this knot. Even though I have already stitched this area. Boy, I don't think that blue could match that single blue much better. This is why I look like I'm a fabric hoarder because, well, this is this tiny piece. Why are you keeping it? This, this is why I keep the tiny piece. I might use it. I might need it. Well, this was one of those cases. Okay, hold on. Boy, I'm getting interrupted all a lot today. Okay. Pull that through. Do, 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 do. All right, bottoms. Oh, yay! Now we get to line the box! Woo! Woo! You lay down. Oh, there's too many stringers to think about here, right? Right. Dookie. Arg. It's 
like, stay where I put you. Oh, it's a beautiful day on Cape Cod. One of the first 60 plus days. Everybody's out for a lovely drive. Okay. Now, how do we do this? Well, lining a box actually a, kind of a little bit easier. She says tentatively. kind of need my lid again to see how it's gonna fit and where it sort of hits, where it doesn't sort of hit, where it Okay. And Erg. Okay. Got it, got it, got it. My daughter is bombing me with pictures of golden retriever puppies. Adorable. So if you've watched the round box on this, You will see a big difference in the tops. Um, yeah. So I'm going to, yeah, take a minute and cry. No, 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 not going to do that. The issue is that the lip is so small on this. And even though we bevel it, um, it's just, it's going to come really close to the edge. And I get a little annoyed by this. Um, they're just, they're so thin. And I know that area right there is going to be a nemesis. Okay, here we go. Deep breath is what it is. Just 
just making sure this isn't coming apart. <clears throat> Uh, the one thing you don't want to do is sew this on so tight uh, that it necks the box in even more so. Um, this design just doesn't fit as tight as I was able to get the other one, uh, the round one. And that's because it Probably needs a couple more stitches of blue someplace. So that ultimately means you can't, because if you just add more gold, the back band will be um, too big. Your back little ribbon piece, you know? The stitched one on the back side will look really thick and you can't so we are just going to make it work make it as lovely as possible yeah 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 and it will be we are going to do it so let's line this box and I'm just, just thinking, 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 always thinking. So, actually, we're gonna do it like this. Take this, we're going to cut a piece straight down. And, I think we're going to be able to get two out of this one. And then, let me remember. So we're going to do a fold over straight across the top. And let it heat up. Hold it up here like this. And we want it to go around the edge a little bit so that our back one can hang down straight. And you'll understand what this means in a minute. There. And put a dart there. And I want a dart. Hold on. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to give it as flat of a press as I can. And then where I put the darts, it's going to angle down like this. I am not doing a one piece wrap around in this. I probably could, but um, no. Now, I have pressed did the darts, did an angle, right? Now that I know how high it is, actually we're gonna do it like this, and it's gonna look like that. 
And then I want to look down here and towards the inside I'm going to put another dart. And it's going to go up to the edge a little above the bottom of the box. And if you remember, if you have watched the round one, the reason we put the darts in is because this is going to fold down. But first, I am going to pin it across the top. And I want this to be nice and high. Oh dear. Up here. Because I want, I don't want to fight with trying to hide the lining on the blue. Okay, I want it to come right up and sit under that. Right into glue. Okay, now we take this, and I can see that when I did my darts, I probably didn't do them in the right spot. Pushing it down. Yep. That it's much longer. And do a couple. Okay. Again, the more pain in the butt, but it'll look good in the end. Let's take this, get to kind of shove that under. There we go. Get that doll noodle in here. No, the, the scrunching up there, you're not going to see it. Sorry, I got a pin in my mouth. We're going to hide that. Because the other piece is going to lay down right over the top of that. Okay. Interesting how one side did that and not the other. Okay. Not quite sure why that's poking out like that, but okay, that's one side. Actually, you know what I'm gonna do? I'm not sure why that's doing that. It's making me disgruntled. It's gonna look nice. 
again making myself crazy with the fabric I decided to use. I have to, I will bring the iron in and kind of give it a little press. Now what I want you to notice is that, see that little bump on the inside? That is because this is here. So this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to punt. Be right back. Okay, this is wool felt. It's like We're going to fill that void. I regret that at the bottom. Not skinny enough. fails just rip it out so I did this one on I forget which one because of this exact same thing um, it's just you don't have that poster board behind it I don't want it so thick that I have the poster board behind it um, because it does add, it adds, and I just do not have the room to tuck that poster board up in, just it's not happening. Hmm, it's weird. <clears throat> Sorry, I got a stretch. Okay. It's starting to get way too toasty up here. Okay. Oh, this may be something that doesn't work, but. And I end up ripping it out. But. It's worth a shot. And things you don't think of until you're in the middle of it. Just see. Well, you know, instead of doing all of them, well, no, I have to because of the end.
think I should just do. I should probably just do the moon. Uh, oop, oop, oop. Bunge that one up. I think I just need to do little squares in this one, otherwise the middle back seam will be a problem. So it looks like that. Kind of putting these like little spacers in so it doesn't recede. The lack of better. Okay, so I gotta rip them out. I gotta rip them out. So I took a moment and ironed out that bend that was ticking me off. Okay. And it just folded the wrong way again. Oh, hold on. Let's get that pinned back in. I think it was at the other end the last time, but doesn't matter. Okay. Yeah, it was because the uh, blue is up higher on the other one. Oh, jeez. I'm going to have it way up there. Little tabs. Okay, everybody's sort of where they're supposed to be at this point. Okay, so that comes around the curve. This is how I do all the linings of my boxes. Okay. Do the same thing with this one. Okay. 
Here, I'm going to start here. There's so my first notch, Here's my second notch. Yes. really love it if these not give me the same issues. It's just all that my last one did. Might be wishful thinking. So when I get it into here, and that one goes there. Okay, I need to come in with another dart. And you're saying, why are we doing these darts again? Because we're going to angle this down. All right, this one can angle from here. And I want to, I really want to make it angle. Okay, because the last time I didn't, and we took it around that curve. And... Somewhat surprised that I'm getting I'm pressing that kind of corner in this time. So when I put it in, it doesn't do that weird, stupid thing. And at this point, it's going to come down from that one. Okay. Actually, look at how look at how nice that looks with just that little bumper there to fill it in. Really did help. Really did. So from here, we're going to put a corner fold in it and I'm going to dart this as well. Cuz when this goes in, these come up. I don't want to do a hard press with these uh, like I, I did at the end of the other video where I make them, force them, because I don't know how deep this is and I need a little bit of leeway. If I commit to it with this gold lame, it just could really backfire on me. So, we're going to go like this. way up here like that okay and take this and I'm going to push it come on come on come on come on I like all thumbs today. Okay. And then we pop these 
out. We want this line underneath here so that it lined like this so that when we drop our center piece in this gold edge comes around and helps us with um, it will help us with our hiding of the uh, but the base inserted piece That might have actually let's just pull that over a little. Then we'll put it in. And then we'll pull that down. And that all right. Goes down like that. Hold this out just a skosh. All right. Okay. Okay, yay. Now, the next pieces. So this is kind of what I was talking about when I said I'm kind of bad about measuring kind of do it on the fly I don't really um, oh this panel is on the inside is this amount by this amount but yeah no I don't do that all right so for the front panel And I'm going to kind of angle it just slightly, not a lot. Okay? Don't get crazy. Now we're going to press this. Oh, this lame wanted to stick. Okay. Here we go. Now I need to put in how far apart I want this side. Maybe a little shorter. Like that, I think. And I'm gonna put it so that I can see that angle. I'm going to do the same thing. Okay, angle it down a little bit. Okay. Now, this is our top, our top to here, and we fold it there, yes, and we press it. I'm sorry, my 
my uh, little block that I have to do this under. I discovered last night my thin one, the material is so coarse on it. I cannot uh, press it on it. Because if I press it on it, what happens? Yeah. It gets these ripples, uh, these little bumps that shows how coarse it is. Okay, so now put a dart there. And we do a dart there. Okay. Right? And you're going, oh my god, this is making my head swim. No, 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 no. It, you, you'll be okay. I promise. It, it will make sense. I'm going to take that little dog ear off. Take that little dog ear off. And I am going to bend this like that. Okay, and that, come on, 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 like that, okay, it'll make sense in a minute, I promise. Silly things to press. So, I did it like this, and then I can actually give us less bulk if I do that. And if I do that, okay. So it's all nice and folded over, right? Yes, right, right, right. And all we do is pull our previous downfold over and tuck that in behind those two, right? Like that. Okay? We're just going to Push that down. And what it does is it marries those two corners together beautifully. Okay. Um, so at this point, you're probably going, well, gee, Kelly, why don't you just glue those along that edge? Here's why. Because the piece that is the metal of the lid is so thin that I have more opportunity to manipulate this, if it's uh, fluid, if that makes sense. I, I guess I don't have another way to kind of put it. So you're basically, you're hiding all of this and you're just going to shove 
that down. See? It'll look really nice when it's done. Um, is it as smooth as the other one? No, no, I didn't say it was going to be as smooth as that. Um, probably could have angled that just a little bit more. But you know what? Um, you know, I could have put... Do I have that little piece? No, no, no. Yeah, I'm gonna. Not taking any, uh... Oh, I just took that. Oh, please. What's funny is where I thought it wouldn't need it, it needs it, because I thought it would bulk it up. It needs it. And do you know why? Because of all those other pieces that are meeting. This will help a lot. Okay. You know what? I know. You're thinking I'm nuts. I am nuts. That edge is hitting, and I don't want it to. And it's going to do what I tell it to do, which is lay smooth. All right, here we go. Let's try this. Go, here we go. This. That's better. Not a ton, but. More than I think. Oh dear, what did I do? I'm ridiculous. Pop it behind, pop it behind. <laughs> I want you to. How's that look now? Yep. Right up. Okay. There we go. Okay. Oh, yeah. Okay. Ooh, yeah. Baby. Yeah, yeah. That's looking good. Okay. 
Okay. And this is definitely not my cheese. I'm losing it. Well, I hope this one wasn't too painful for you guys. It feels slightly painful to me. So much. My iron shut off. So much that didn't really go right. It's gonna go to there. Just remember, do slight angles down. Don't do major angles down. Okay, you just want it to taper in just slightly. Um, it will look correct in the end. And if it looks a little too compared to the top, just take your top and uh, make that a little straighter. I'm gonna fold it with the original. Okay. All right, so our initial doot. And this can basically go like that. And give it a little nip there. And it's going to go like that. We're going to keep it like that so we have something to hold on to when we press it. Otherwise, you have too tiny of a piece and uh, burn city. Okay, then you can take this off. All right. Okay. So now we're going to do this and that. I'm going to do it like that. I'm going to press it. And I'm going to cut it like that, right? And now we're going to take it back over and give it one more press so that that top seam. I almost, oh, I got a little too over crazy with that corner. Overcut just a little too much. So now it doesn't want to fold. Okay. That looks right. Last press. Just a little 
Reheat there. All good. Good, good, good. Take this. Slide it in. Slide that behind the two. I am really sorry. I'm like all over the place on this. Not keeping track of where my camera is. My sincere apologies. that work these down get that right up okay um, I'm going to be using a small needle to do the top. Oh dear, come on. I need a few more pins that don't have glue, please. Okay. And push this down in. Yeah, get down in there. Again, we're doing our best. Ugh. May is also one of those that once you put a pin in it, you can see that pinhole forever. At least it seems like it. Pretty good. Why are you doing that? Don't do that. It's puckering. Needs to stop. Stop puckering. No puckering up, Buttercup. Okay, thumb guard. Fresh fishing line. Okay, do 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 And again, we're going to go this way. Start on the back side. Not that it really does matter at this point because this will be hidden up under. Hopefully.
Do I seem a little paranoid? Yes. Mm, concerned my knot is actually going to be a little bulbous thing that shows. If it does, I'll be sticking the iron on it. Something. Well, that glue's really down. Now, if you know, are the master of these, please don't laugh at my video of how I do it. Just be glad that you are the master and I am not doing it anymore. And that I have shown people a potentially difficult way and I need to grab that little bit of fabric there and bring it up through there. Okay. Because then they will want your fabulous work because they will not want because I have made them have second thoughts. <laughs> oh, good grief. I just really am uncomfortable not being able to show you a video that I feel is concise and productive, you know. But this is what it is. Each one is a special snowflake. Either, you know, Maybe it comes with a wrong top because the top was lost. Or, oh goodness, come on. So close to this being all over with. And this will be on gluing and drying and can you tell I'm really ready to be done? I sincerely hope nobody feels this way about my designs, but I have a feeling they do. Especially the lobster trap. Okay. Is it going to stay down? It is. You know what? I'm going to come back at it because I really. Ah. 
I don't want to see that on the inside. Um, I kind of relayed this yesterday in the, uh, I just, I, the, in the round video that I just did. These are consecutive days in a row. Um, I have so much appreciation for uh, the fundusculli lids. I just do. They're they are thick, and they make life much easier as a finisher. Not that you shouldn't get the other ones, just be prepared um, to have as thin of a finish edge as you possibly can. How could I have uh, helped that with this? If I had made the um, interior wall just a little bit higher so that the very top row um, that this on one of these sides wasn't over as much. Um, it would help. I mean, I tried to do that on one, uh, the last round when I did, and I was dangerously close because that lip that hangs down, you don't have a lot of wiggle room there either. Um, so, you know, it's... Try to only lose one row at the top. Make sure to use thin material. Um, when you finish with the um, non fundus tops that don't have the big groove uh, to well to set it down in. And um, these are just things you want to pay attention to when you're choosing your fabrics and your um, pieces for the for the inside wall. And like I said, yeah, I probably could have done a one-piece lining. Um, but I know that this works. And after the debacle, I mean, I love the seam on the back. And I would absolutely do it again. Um, it just, it's a nicer finish. It just was a bit of a learning process for me. A little learning curve. I've done how many of these and but it's all because I changed my process on using the sewing machine on the back. Ultimately. And if I had measured right, mm, wouldn't have taken us so long. Yeah, I'm just blathering on because I'm sewing. Okay, because we have a little bit of a shred going on there, I'm going to take it through the needle point. Pull the needle point up instead of vice versa. Come on, get in there, get in there, get in there.
Okay. Um, I may have to kind of manipulate some of the gold lame back onto that. This gold lame doesn't, when you're pulling up through, um, you sometimes scar the fabric. Then why use it, Kelly? Because, I mean, look at that box glow. That's why it's glowing. It reminds me of Raiders of the Lost Ark. When he opens it up. And it lights up his face. But he doesn't really open that, does he? All the baddies do. But they make you think he did. In the movie poster. That stitch is being a troublemaker. Get in there. Do -do -do -do. Come on. Hey!
will say I do love the concept of what lovely small gift could come in a box of this size. Beyond the box itself, of course. Okay. Can you feel it? We're almost there. I don't even want to think how long this video is. I mean, seriously. Really seriously. It's... Yeah, it's going to take forever to upload. I had to stop uploading the other one so that I could video change this. Okay, deep breath, everyone. Let's grab our top. Well, I'm a little ahead of myself, aren't I? I still got to do the bottom. So, let us first... Measure. And I'm gonna guess that down there it's going to be a little wider than it appears to be up here. So let's do uh -huh. so we're gonna definitely do three. And three, five. Okay. Yep, I'm gonna do it out of paper because I made myself crazy yesterday. Well, last night. In out. And out with a box that wouldn't fit. The bottom of it just was making me nuts. And then we have you. One, two, three. Okay. Oh. Is this a business card holder? No. And my string, because I don't want to almost messed it up from the start. Remember, the material is not that thick. Eight. 
let's not quite do an eighth on that side. I just have a feeling. Ooh, and a radio here. Didn't know that Cape Cod had so many motorcycles on it, did you? Mm -hmm. We do. I think it's funny this time of year. We start seeing very fancy cars around here. Ooh, dust. Perfect. We start seeing Lamborghinis and Maseratis and plenty and plenty and plenty of Corvettes. But a lot more of the European cars than you'd expect. Never can find what I want. I want. All I wanted was a small piece of foam core, not some ginormous piece that I have to uh, futz around with. Okay. I do this, and then when I have to go and clean up this mess after especially something with this many different things to do, takes me the better part of a day to get it cleaned up. Ooh, I'm so excited though that I do have yay, this. Okay. So I'm gonna take this. Cut that. This cutie box is almost done. Okay. Yep, yep. Do this. Most put a big old chunk in it. Okay, and then we take and we smear some glue on it and put it on and smush, smush, smush. Rub it all flat. Okay. Sorry, wiggle in the camera. And trim that off. Oh my gosh. Oh, I almost had to iron another piece. I might have to if it's not going to fit. Okay, 
Let's see. Oh, no, 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 no. Nope, I don't think we're any better off there. Well, guess what? I'm using it. You know it. I can't use this. All right, hold on. All right, back at it. Can't believe I used up all of it. My goodness, I didn't use up all of it, right? Talk about a hissy fit that would have been had. Thumb guard. I don't need that anymore. It's just making my thumb sweaty. I just realized something. Ah! Ooh, I hope there's a hole for me. <laughs> I hope I didn't glue it so well that I can actually marry the cording in the back. Oh dear. So worried about making sure it's on and it's on so well and it's ah.
looks like a piece of soap in a wrapper. Shiny gold wrapper. Okay, I said that. It made me think of last night doing the base that went into the the round one and it looked like a cookie and that's all it took. Now I want a cookie. You know what was awesome? I got home and my daughter made cookies. Alright, we're gonna double check that this fits. And then we do the just in case glue. Oh yes. Is there any place that I can see stuff? Ooh, aside from a schniblet of glue stringer. Ooh, yeah, I think that looks pretty nice. Okay, I'm gonna pop it out. Uh, booger of glue. Come on, come on, come on. There. to slide in. Just slide in first then this side and we push it way down in Let's get that little knob of glue Willy Wonka esque. <sighs> okay, I am going to look and see. Oh, look at that. I do have a place I can marry two pieces and cram them right in there. Yay! Okay. So, in order to not have to touch this tomorrow, I'm doing the cording now. Okay. Okay. I know you're very excited. I know I am not excited. No, I am excited because I want this done. And I'm sure by now you do as well. Although you have the advantage that you get to fast forward. <laughs> oh, great, my nose is starting to run. Uh, choo -choo -choo -choo. Oh my gosh. It's gonna be like a seven hour video, I swear. Basically, the mortification never stops. I want the tiniest nub. I 
Oh, so sorry. Find a spot. There. Can I do it there? No. wasn't thinking ahead on that one, was I? I almost went with the blue, but I'm glad I found this gold. I was worried that it, because it wasn't uh, the Krynik that sh this person used, that it wasn't going to... Uh, work. Oh my goodness, my glue gun is like getting in the way of my hand. Why am I having issues? And uh, but I think it kind of puts a good marries the two colors between the color of the metal and the Krynik that she used.
But what it started off as, I seem definitely very happy with how much I was able to get it to glue down. We'll be soaking these hands tonight. Okay, I'm putting it down because I really need to pull and need to push that down in. And it's just hard to get that angle, that butterfly there. What I'm doing is I'm pushing this so that it sits really tight to cover my mechanics. Okay. Again, I know some of you are going to say, Kelly, why don't you just glue that on? Well, opening and closing this lid a lot, this wouldn't have really that much to uh, glue to. And I just like if I can possibly sew the cording on so that it helps keep that cording stable for a longer period of time, I that's what I want to do. I would always be worried that it's going to pop off. But it is your piece and you do with it what works for you.
I know that in the not too distant future I will not be able to do finishing like I do now because of uh, the lovely arthritis that I have not only inherited but gotten from years of doing this. So I can totally understand why people would need to use it because they want to do it themselves. They want to do it from start to finish and I'm good with that. I definitely think when I am done here, I am going to go to the store and get some ice cream. And don't say wine, because I am one of those people that doesn't drink wine. Oh, shh, shh. I know, I'm crazy. You have no idea how my left hand finger pointer is index whatever you want to call it is oh, cramping <laughs> holding this cording oh my gosh I must admit I'm slightly terrified about marrying these two together. Why is that you say? Because I usually live and leave a nice big area of unglued and I didn't. Oh my goodness. Uncramp. Uncramp. Right, so there's my piece and I want to do it there. So I want to do it there. Okay, okay, and then once we get this done, we only have one last petrifying thing to do. Glue the top to the bottom. Yeah, doesn't matter how many times I do it, terrifying. Let's not forget, I haven't put this top back on since I put the lining on. Just praying I can't see the blue. That everything stayed where it needs to stay. Alright, now I'm going to take this and I'm going to slide it in. Like, oh lord, I don't know. Boy, today just really makes me sound like I live in Motorcycle Alley. That's all I'm hearing now. I'm just... Landed on my elbow. It's one of my own hairs. So in my barn here, they, um...
you know, we have ladybugs that find their ways in, and once in a while there'll be a wasp that finds its way in. It's like, oh my gosh. Because all of a sudden they'll kind of just land on you. Ah! Man, it's an old, it's over 100 years old, I guess. So, yeah. They find a way. Plenty of hidey holes to get into and out of. So come on, baby. Where's my, is this my, yeah, yeah, yeah. Hoo hoo hoo! Thumb guard on! Are you kidding me? Almost done. A little fixing, a little moving, a little shaking, and this baby will be done. I want to go under. I want to come up. Over. Yeah, yeah. Right there. Yeah. Woohoo. Look at that. Push it all back down. Okay. I'm going to come in. Push that under. Push that down. Hmm, I'm going to go up, under, Oops. there, going in there, right, push that down. Like, we're gonna push my needle down, pop up. No, no, no. Don't you pop out of that hole? in your hidey hole. Ooh, I just pulled it back up myself by putting my thread there. Back in. Mm. Okay, you go there. You go mm, there. Hold that. Okay. Gonna go. We're gonna jump under through that. Right. Like that. Oh, so close. So close. I'm going to Hmm. How do I want to do this? See my problem is is I don't have anything down here to grab to pull that back down. I'm going to go and slide this under, and then I'm going to come there. Okay, okay, okay. That's that's. Come on, 
Pull that down. Yes. Okay. Now we need that to shove under and that to shove down. So we're going to take this and we're going to grab it. Pull it. Peel this up a little. A little shorter. Come on. Oh, so close. Yes. Yep, yep, yep. There. There. Look at that. There we go. Let's do a knot. Call it good. I need my doll needle for a second. But we're good. We're good. that right there okay all right now that I know it's all secured I'm going to come back in and I'm going to just pull that this way. There we go. And that. And that. And push that down. Okay. There we go. Whew. Okay. I was about to panic that I hadn't hit play again. <laughs> oh dear. Okay, that's still good and tight. I am so pleased with the gold lame. Now, we have our base piece. Yay, yay, yay. Yay. Okay. Um, again, if I was smart, I would have put a weight in the bottom of this because this is, you know, you, it goes back like this. It can be a little tippy. Um, but I think it's pretty good. Is this just the right size? All right, hold on. This. And... Same on the top. Hmm. Hmm. Uh, do I want to? I think. I think. I think. I think. Okay, I want you to notice something. Okay, 
um, what's happened is, is that this needs to be glued down so that it will grab again. Okay. Um, just because of how it is. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to I'm going to get this set on. I really need to see it. Actually, I don't, but. Oop, that's the backside. Jeez, Kelly. Brilliant. I am going to do it like this. Uh, you don't see this problem with the other uh, okay, what's going on? You do not see this issue with uh, the fundus scullies because they are thicker. So what happens is, is that um, that uh, yeah. They warp because you've now, you know, put this piece on the top and so it arches a little or it, you know, even though we had it completely closed when we did it. So you're not going to like seeing what I have to do, but for right now, we're just going to do the glue and see if it rectifies later. Uh, you cannot put a lot of glue on this because it will jelly donut ketchup with burger bun out of it. So just try to get a nice even bead. I try to cram it into that corner a little bit and keep it away from the inner edge. Because you do not want to see it coming out there just as much as you don't want to see it coming out anyplace else. Okay. Don't worry, I'll get glue on that spot. Okay. Front. Front. <laughs> oh, goodness. And commit to sitting it down. Right. Just going to hold it here. Kind of get it moved over to the edge. Don't want any one side.
having it shift too much to the front, too much to the back. There is a tiny bit of play in this, but by the time we get all the clamps on, Closing it instead of opening it. Brilliant. Okay, don't push too hard, right? If you think any of your uh, lining is moving forward we can push that up a little after no that's okay that's okay yeah that's too much i need to let off on that a little bit firm but not bending All right yeah. Sorry, shifting, shifting. Sometimes I wonder if my brick isn't the best way, but no. These work best. In a certain respect. Gentle, gentle. Let's do the opposite corner. Oop, I kind of slid off my board. Okay, even pressure. Come on, come on. Okay. Last one. Okay, looks like good pressure all the way around. Okay. All right, tomorrow we'll have to deal with, hopefully won't have to deal with that. It'll just be able to close again because it's all even. <laughs> I have a giant one of these, which I think you remember from another picture, but okay. There we go. Till tomorrow. I'm going to set that up straight. Ta da! So funny that that's uneven because it's a different, made it a different time. All right, till tomorrow. All right, let's take this off and see how we did.
I'm releasing it and yet pushing down on the thing that okay. yep so this is a problem that often happens with this particular lid and so basically what I have to do is and I can't do it on camera because I can't do it on this tabletop is I literally have to take a hammer and hit the front part of this butterfly. I'm going to put a little couple pieces of tape over it um, to try to bend that butterfly forward some because it just it just doesn't catch and I've not been able to oh well I don't even have to do that all I had to do was kind of mash it with my hands Gotta love that. In the past, uh, not that you want to do it, I try everything but, but that usually has never worked before and I am so glad that it did because, yeah. Okay, perfect. Whew. I didn't have to show that. Or attempt it. I it, it's it just makes you cringe when you have to do that. Right, got schnimblets all over it. It keeps wanting to pop a little bit, but it's not popping open, it's just not. As my hand keeps hitting it, I can, I'm clicking it. Smoothing, making sure everybody looks happy. So I can see that there's a little fray uh, from the gold. Probably just some little extras that have either worn up. I think we could trim those because it looks like a piece that's pulled from the back side. So I will lift those up. I'm not going to be able to get them with those. Uh, I don't know that my. I think I took my good ones home, of course. I think it's very easy for the uh, gold to kind of get a little fuzzy. Boy, I don't think we could ask for better. How pretty is this cute little box? You know, for as crazy as they make me, they are a very sweet needlepoint piece. Uh, so, points to make about this particular 
finish. See, and I just did all that, and I just put more right back on it. Ah, uh, measure, measure, measure. I messed up measuring this end, which then set everything off. My one piece would have worked if I had measured this area correctly. Duh. So, um, just cautionary tale on measuring, getting your measurements correct in the first place. And, oh, I can see a little bit of, oh, there we go. I can see a little glue fluff that just stayed down in there. But that's a pretty smooth lining, right? Yep. Not maybe as smooth as a one piece, but I definitely did not want to fight it. If you find that you feel like your lining is coming too far forward, just take a very soft end, round ended tool and just kind of gently push it in. And I have had that work on other things. Um, while I don't feel that it's really necessary on this particular finish, you can also kind of push at the bottom to try to get it to sink in a little if you want to. Okay, but for the most part, I think this is as, in this style of lining, it's as smooth as it's going to get. And everybody looks happy. Let's see if it, oh, it's kind of a hard close. Oh. There we go. All right. Uh, with that being said, uh, good luck with your finishing of the Limoges boxes. I hope this helps you decide whether or not you take this project on. If you do, I think once you get it all done, don't be afraid in the middle like I always am. Um, just, you know, measure, 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 and do the best that you can, and I am sure that it will come out absolutely gorgeous. All right. Good luck. Message me if you need any help or any advice. And happy finishing. All right, let's take a look at... Uh Our lid. Look at that. Everybody's good. Everybody's even. Yay. Oh, and look at how lovely. Okay. All right. So then our next step is going to be to put this onto this. Correct, correct. And I want to have the lid up when I put it on so I can watch that it's all in the right place. Yes, yes. Okay. So now, take my glue. Pull the paper towel out of the trash. Get all my glue buggers off of it. Hold that back just a little. Right. I'm going to again 
nice bead along the back edge not too close we don't want it gushing out trying to get that I don't want to see any glue on the interior, on the exterior. So, you know, we're dealing with a Goldilocks situation just right. I'm going to pull a little bit out. Okay. just want ever so slight kind of little up on that lip the nice thing about this glue is that you um you have a little time to work with it you know so um okay so put that down actually with that up i have to think about these things when i'm doing them let me sit it down on all of our lining looks good using my camera to kind of make sure from the top angle and I'm just gonna sit and hold it for a minute I am NOT pushing down like crazy I just want to make sure it's not gonna shift okay and I don't see the any glue now if for some reason you saw some glue someplace um, you take one of your thin pins okay and if you see just a tiny bit you're gonna run it right along that edge and it'll pull the little bit of goop out and it'll pull that into the edge by just running the pin along that edge. Okay. So again, this is in lieu of using our um, no, that's not big enough. Uh, the clamps. No clamps on this on this. None, none, none. Okay. I was going to try to chop that down, but that's okay. I don't need to. Okay. And I don't want to um, shut the lid, and I want to, we're going to slide that on, making sure not to move my underpiece. Okay. Let me 
put the mat board down so that we don't uh, scar the metal. Okay, I'm going to try to show you from Not that I can. Ooh, my shoes. Good. Hold on. All right, my dirty floor. Okay, and there it is. All right, now we wait. Okay, let's take it off and see what we got going on. And just like that, very nice. Easy close lid. Ta da! All right, so learn from me. Don't use the clamps. While I love the clamps, don't use the clamps. If you think your lining is popping out a little with the gold lame, I got to make sure to use the blunt end. Just give it a little push. Yeah, that's good. We're fine. Nothing showing. All right. Ta da! Lovely. And done. Okay. Good luck. Hope you uh, tackle this one for yourselves and uh, heed my errors. <laughs> oh, good luck, everyone.